Let's get into today's episode of Why We Succeed. It sounds like you're helping a lot of people clearly because, you know, half of your revenue is coming from teaching. So that that means that somebody is enjoying the things that you're teaching them and, and adding value to other people, helping other artists to get to the place that you are and maybe even to even greater degrees and accomplishments is a, a wonderful thing. Mm-hmm. And I'm really curious, along your journey, was there anybody who helped you along the way? Anybody that you look at and was like, man, that person got me to where I am today. They were a mentor for me. Well, I always consider myself lucky to have been surrounded by lots of supportive people. Mm -hmm. For instance, my first drawing workshop, it was at a local art store. That contract lasted for three whole years. Wow. And I really tell myself, okay, I was just 16. My art wasn't that good, but there were still people who were there willing to give me a chance. And that's really something that I tell my students, just Mm -hmm. do the things and there's no real moment to be totally ready because you'll never be ready if you don't Mm -hmm. do it. So just start and then you'll see and there will always be people, no matter your level, who will resonate with what you do, who will... Yeah, who who will like your your stuff. And once it started, then you can evolve. Right. That's wonderful. And when you look at it from the perspective of launching a business, what would you say to other aspiring artists out there who may not have that mindset that you mentioned earlier where you're like, hey, I have a skill, I have a passion, I'm going to monetize it. What would you say to those people who are hesitant to do it? What is a, a step that they can take to begin monetizing their art, their passion? Well, I think the most important thing is first to define what you really like, because Mm. it doesn't seem like it, because most people think that when you're an artist, you're just drawing, but there can be so many subcategories, like Mm. are you illustrating commissions for private people? Are you illustrating packaging commissions, for instance? Are you illustrating books? Are you going to conventions? Or are you having an online shop? Or are you teaching? Or what do you do? So I think the first thing, which is what blocks most people is that they just don't know exactly how to monetize. Mm -hmm. And uh, the thing is that once you get to know all the opportunities that there are, then it will be much, much easier for you to to get a clearer vision actually on what you can do. And then I would also suggest that once you are clear about what you want to do, then Mm -hmm. just try it and maybe don't try so hard to to already make it a full-time job. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because in hindsight, it really helped me to stay a student, to still study Mm -hmm. while trying out what worked for me, what didn't. So that really gave me, yeah, that, that kind of put off the pressure of, I really need to do it right now, right here. And uh, then you can really see how you can do it and how you can address. That's good. And I think that a lot of people need to hear that because sometimes people feel like, okay, well, this is the direction that I want to go in. This is what I feel passionate about. This is what I want to be my profession. And they will drop everything else. You know, they will focus solely on that. And Let me be clear. I know for some people that works, but I would say that for the majority of people, you need to still have some other focus, something else that you can even kind of look at as a backup plan so Mm -hmm. that just in case, you know, turning your, your artwork and your passion, whatever it may be, into a profession in case it doesn't work out as soon as you will want, right? you have something else that can bide the time, something that you Mm -hmm. can continue to earn a living from and continue to work on your skill, continue to hone your craft outside of that traditional job or those traditional work hours, or as you mentioned, outside of those hours that you're being a student. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So I'm curious, what are some of the tools that you find have been helpful for you, not just as an artist, but also as a businesswoman? Well, I I always have lots of ideas and I always need to, to get them out. And <laughs> as I'm a control freak and like things to be perfect, <laughs> um, I always love to journal. So actually, if I say that there's one totally necessary tool for me uh, that regularly shapes my business and my mindset and how I tackle things, it's just a pen 
and adrenaline, mm-hmm. like just to, to put out all those thoughts because I think it's really important to to write down what you think because sometimes you, you have so much going on in your head mm-hmm. that you don't necessarily take the time to, to take out the most important pieces. And mm-hmm. when you're in a quiet room and you're just writing your things down, then everything becomes so much clearer and you see what you're doing, what might not be working, what are the next action steps. And yeah, just having it on paper is so much easier. Right. Definitely. Now, the other thing I want to get into is not only have you been publishing manga, but you also have your clothing line as well, you know? So <laughs> what 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 made you say, hey, you know what? I'm going to go from the sheet of paper to the, the shirts, the clothing. How did that come about? Well, since early on, I was always passionate about fashion. I just Not love fashion. pretty clothes <laughs> and I also love haute couture and fashion design and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, designing clothes was always something that I wanted to do, but I had abandoned this because when I was done with high school, I got into, yeah, I got accepted into a design school. And mm-hmm. then like, I think one month before school started, I was, I suddenly started crying in front of my parents and I told them, oh no, I can't do that. <laughs> it's too difficult. I don't want to go to Paris. I don't want to. Yeah. And it, it was a universe that didn't fit me. But mm-hmm. then I really took that, that creative fashion design aspect into my artwork and especially into my manga. So for instance, my main series since uh, 2016 is Illustrated Fairy Tales, where I'm mm-hmm. illustrating classical fairy tales. And that really allowed me to, yeah, to, to completely go all in with the fashion and so on. Right. And for uh, the fashion brand right now, it was totally unexpected. <laughs> I got contacted by Louis Gartieri, who is a graphic oh, wow. designer from France. Mm-hmm. And uh, he actually asked me if I was willing to illustrate some iPhone cases for his new shop. And then maybe it could evolve into t-shirts and other merch. And I was like, oh yeah, well, I'd be more into the t-shirts because I always mm-hmm. wanted to, to illustrate for fashion. And right. then he suddenly suggested, hey, what if we <laughs> just create our own fashion brand? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, nice. yeah, that's how it got started. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. And it's wonderful how certain opportunities will just come about. You know, I think about just the things that you've shared through our conversation, how pivotal certain people have been in your life, right? And with our podcast, it's all about relationships. You know, I think back mm-hmm. to when you got that that first big start, right? When you got invited to the convention, you know, somebody had to say, hey, you want to come to this convention? And you did that and everything just kind of went from there. And likewise, when you started to branch into teaching, it started with being there present at a convention and then people coming up to you and saying, hey, I want to do that too. I'm interested in it. You're like, yo, okay, look, there's something else that I can do. And, and right here, as you just mentioned, when it came to that passion that you had about fashion, it wasn't something that you were pursuing at the time, but the right person came at the right time and said, hey, would you be interested in this opportunity? Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of Why We Succeed. If you value relationships and believe they are the true key to success, be sure to subscribe. To watch this full discussion and gain access to exclusive content, join our Patreon today. The link is in the description. Thank you and we'll catch you on the next episode.